Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Today I am bringing to you my Pathfinder 2nd Edition Lost Omens Product Line Buyer's Guide. Uh, probably a bit of a lengthy title, but back in the uh, during the holidays, I did do some holiday gift guides for like Pathfinder and Starfinder, and I really enjoyed doing those videos, but those were kind of just meant to be like a general, uh, like if you're looking to get somebody into uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, like what the products I would recommend and kind of the order that I'd recommend them in. This video is more for people that are into Pathfinder 2nd Edition, they have the core rulebook, maybe even something like the Advanced Player's Guide or anything along those lines with some of the rules up expansions, but they want to get more into the world, the world of Galarian, the Pathfinder campaign setting, and there are some absolutely fantastic books for that, and these are the Lost Omens product lines. Typically speaking, these are a bit thinner as far as page count goes, versus the rules expansion like Secrets of Magic or the Book of the Dead or Dark Archive, uh, the Game Master Guide, things like that. So they do tend to be thinner books, but these are dedicated to expanding the world lore and giving you like campaign setting information for the world of Galarian. Uh, so there's a lot of fantastic flavor text and world building in these books. And honestly, these are just some of my favorite uh, supplements that have been coming out over the course of the last few years, just because of the amount of like really cool additions that they put in there, uh, the cool levels of detail, the world building, like I said. Uh, the Lost Omens books will typically have some new options if you are a player or some new options if you are a game master. And I do have this list split into two separate uh, categories, one for players and one for uh, game masters. And But they will usually have things like new heritages or ancestries, backgrounds. Uh, they may have new feats uh, or equipment or spells or things along those lines. So in addition to the flavor text, uh, there is still going to be mechanical stuff that gets added in these books. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it, shall we? And we're going to start from the player's perspective. And the book that I would recommend that players add first to their collection if they're looking to get into uh, buying the Lost Omens books would actually be the Lost Omens Character Guide. Uh, so this was one of the first books to come out for uh, uh, the, the Lost Omens product line, and it's just an absolutely fantastic one. So I'm not going to go through and flip through the entire book, but we will get a, a sense of what's in here by taking a look at the table of contents. We do have new information and options for the main heritages, or ancestries I should say, from the core rulebook. So we have stuff for humans, dwarves, elves, gnomes, goblins, and halflings, keeping in mind that uh, half-elves and half-orcs uh, are kind of found under the uh, the human entry. Uh, and they'll have things like new feats or new heritages, which is kind of a, uh, gives you some abilities that kind of differentiate your culture from another culture part of the same uh, ancestry. Uh, so they are really, really cool, and you usually get some racial feats or uh, ancestral, ancestral feats, I think they're, they're called. Uh, but yeah, some really, really cool stuff here. We also have some new ancestries, including the Hobgoblins and lizard folk, but also the Leshies, and we're just going to check out the Leshies really quick. On the way, though, we will see, for example, we've got uh, the gnomes here, and there's a new heritage for them, uh, the vivacious gnome, and then some uh, new ancestral feats that you can choose for them. Uh, so really, really cool stuff there. Like I so said, they usually have some really fantastic uh, options in these books, but I want to I want to take a look at the Leshies because these things are my absolute favorite. And there is my favorite version of the Leshy. Leshies are basically like plant creatures, uh, plant-based humanoids that have different off, uh, offshoots of them, depending on like different types of vegetation. So we got like the fungus one here that's looking kind of nasty, but then we got the gourd Leshy. And I just absolutely love this because uh, the gourd, is, it looks like a head. It has like eyes and like a mouth. On it, but that's not actually the Leshy's where it's like its brain uh, or where it actually communicates out of. It's literally just like a hollowed out thing that sits on top of their body. And they can actually store stuff in there, which I just absolutely love. But yeah, there's some really great stuff in here. You also get some information on some of the organizations that you may be able to join uh, if you were to uh, to play, um, if, if you were to like to join one of the, the factions that are 
operating in Galarian, like the Hell Knights or the Knights of Last Wall. Uh, I think the Firebrands are in here as well. Um, so yeah, just some really cool information on some of the uh, the different organizations, uh, things like the Pathfinder Society, uh, the, all kinds of really cool stuff in this book. So really fantastic first product. If you are a player in Pathfinder 2nd Edition and you're looking to expand upon the options that are already available to you in the core rulebook. So this one is absolutely fantastic for that. Now the next book in the, this video for players that I would recommend uh, is essentially kind of expanding upon some of the things that were introduced in the character guide. So here we have the Lost Omens Ancestry Guide. And this just basically gives you all kinds of new options for the, uh, the, the, the different um, ancestries in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And these ones are basically more or less uh, all new options. You do have some uh, of these heritages here. And what's really cool about this book is that it actually introduces the versatile heritages, uh, which are basically um, options that can be added to any of the ancestries. So for example, you don't necessarily have to be like just human or, you know, just, um, you know, a, an orc or a goblin or anything along those lines. So you have like the damp fear, which is sort of like a, you're descended from uh, the joining of a mortal and a vampire. So again, I can apply to any ancestry, which is just, again, really, really cool stuff in here. There's all kinds of great stuff uh, in here, but we also do get like some new... Uh, completely new ancestries as well. We got like the Tengu, the sort of the crow folk. We got the tiefling. Uh, again, just some really, really awesome stuff in here. This is, again, a really fantastic, a really fantastic book, really fantastic product. And again, it's just, it's just chock full of new ancestries, new heritages, new options for you as a player character. And again, uh, one of the things that is honestly a major strength of Pathfinder 2nd Edition is the amount of options and choices and customized uh, abilities that you can apply to your characters. And this book just adds, again, a whole ton of stuff to that. So we do have a couple of books that are built around giving you a lot of new options when you're building your character, uh, some when you're leveling your character up. But let's just say for a moment, we want to take a little bit of a break from the ancestry and heritage focused books and we want to learn a little bit more about the world of Galarian itself. So we do have the next book that I would recommend, and I do recommend this on the player side for this video, uh, but as a game master, this is one that I would also really highly recommend. It would probably be the first one that I would recommend specifically for game masters, but I think this the players would benefit from this as well because your player characters would have some knowledge of the world around them. And this book is the Lost Omens World Guide. It's not really a full campaign setting. Uh, it's just kind of a gazetteer that gives you a little bit of information about some of the different areas in the world of Galarian, like Absalon and Starstone Isle, uh, the Broken Lands, you've got the Mogwani Expanse, the Impossible Lands. Uh, so it gives you just a little bit of information on each of them, which is great. So it gives you a sense of like knowledge on the world itself. And for the Game Master side of, you, of things, you have like the resources that each of these locations uh, have sort of in abundance. The factions that operate in there, the, the different types of people and languages, the different uh, primary religions. Uh, so it gives you all kinds of great information, some timeline information on the different areas. So if you wanted to have sort of a bit of a focus on like the history, uh, like knowledge history, then you could do that certainly with this. And yeah, it just gives you some great, uh, some great things here. There's also some sort of like legendary individuals or events that took place. And you can also get some new like backgrounds. And so there are some like new player character options in here as well. But again, if you just want to learn more about the world itself, especially like this was a great book for me because I missed out on Pathfinder first edition. I, you know, I, I only had like a core rule book and an, an advanced player's guide for years and years and years. I didn't start getting into Pathfinder 1st Edition until after Pathfinder 2nd Edition already came out. And this was one of the books that really started to get me interested in the world itself. So a really fantastic book and just a great little bit of information on the different parts of the world, 
that your players might know about, some cool options included here as well. Just a really fantastic book and one that I would recommend picking up if you are a player or, again, if you're a game master. I don't want to show like the same books in two different segments, so, uh, but that would be one that I'd also highly recommend for a game master. All right, up next we have what is po quite possibly my favorite in the entire Lost Omens product line, and this is Lost Omens Gods and Magic. So this is a kind of a book that, you know, at first I was afraid it was going to be something like a Deities and Demigods from back in the day, where, because it goes over, like, information on the gods that it was going to be filled with, like, their stat blocks and uh, all kinds of information that you're just really never going to use. Uh, but to my surprise, and much to my delight, the information that they provide on the different deities are just absolutely, it's, it's all flavor text, you know, it's none of it is like their stats if you were to fight them as a god. It doesn't touch that at all, it just gives you all kinds of cool stuff. So you got their right up here, you've got their, the realm that they exist in, uh, their allies, so what gods they're allied with, what gods they're enemies with, um, what their temples may take the form of. So for Abadar, for example, uh, their temples may take on the form of banks, cathedrals, and courthouses. Uh, then you've got their typical worshippers, what their sacred animal is, the colors that you associate with the religion, which is a great small little detail that helps a lot uh, when it comes to just, you know, again, adding a bit of um, credibility and realism to the world. So absolutely awesome stuff here. Uh, you've got their divine abilities, which is, you know, sort of the, the attributes that they tend to, to favor. Uh, again, for, if you're like a, a follower of them, it would be like a good secondary ability score because you want, obviously, your wisdom if you're a cleric to be, you know, your primary one. But it gives you that information as well and their sort of like domain information. So again, really cool stuff. But then it gives you like their history as well as um, what kinds of things you could have uh, as a boon if you uh, do things in the favor of that god. Now this section might be better suited for Game Masters, but it's still really cool to get an idea. And look, the as far as like the boons or the curses, if you please or displease the gods, um, I mean, these are things that would be the subject of folklore, subject of like the church's uh, teachings and histories, and there would be examples of, you know, the god favoring one of their chosen and the chosen getting some of these like, you know, unique, almost, you know, supernatural abilities. Or if they turn, if someone turns their back on the church or if they do something to really um, disrupt the, the god's plans, then they may be struck with curses. So just again, just really, really cool. You also just have expressions, expressions that uh, worshippers of the various gods might actually use. So again, just really, really cool stuff there. You get that information for pretty much all of the uh, the major gods there. Uh, and in addition, you also get some new uh, some new spells for uh, like the cleric uh, class as well as stuff for uh, the champion, uh, which is essentially the Pathfinder Second Edition version of the Paladin. So you get all kinds of cool new spells, new abilities in here as well, in addition to just, again, a ton of great flavor text. This is the, easily one of my favorite RPG books, period, and it is absolutely my favorite deity-focused book that I own in my collection because it's filled with the information that I want to see in there and not just like, oh, these are their stats if you want to fight them. I know I'm harping on that a lot, um, but most of, if not all of the deity books that I have, I, with the exception of this one, uh, that's what they have in them, is like the creature stats, is in treating this god like it's another monster. I much prefer the way that it's handled here, so really awesome stuff. Uh, all right, so up next we have something that kind of works along with the Lost Omens world guide that I mentioned just a little while ago. Uh, but this is another just really interesting, uh, well, you know, thought out and just kind of a cool idea for a book. This is the Lost Omens Travel Guide. So it kind of expands a little bit on the world guide. But the thing that I love about it is it's essentially almost presented the way that you would present like a tourism like brochure or like a campaign of trying to get people interested in visiting 
uh, do, you know, your area kind of thing. It also goes into like some just some cool information, like the uh, the way that the passage of time is tracked in various cultures uh, in periods of history. Uh, but then you also get you know things like the designs of certain buildings. Uh, you also get information on like fashion trends in different areas for different individuals with uh, from various walks of life. It's just again just a really really cool kind of concept idea, and like I said, it just it seems almost like a brochure or like this travel guide that you would go to you know a travel agency here in the real world and pick up something like this to learn about, you know, an area. Or, since we're on YouTube, I'm sure we've all seen tourism videos uh, from areas around us. Like, interestingly enough, I live in Nova Scotia, and I still get tons of, like, visit Nova Scotia ads, especially during the summer. It's, it's a little weird. Um, but, again, you just get all kinds of cool little bits of information, lots of really interesting flavor. And that's the thing that, again, I love about these books is just the amount of world building um, that they provide. There's just the, the incredible writing that goes into them, uh, the amount of love and attention to detail that goes into them, just the, the quality of the information that they give, the fantastic artwork. Just overall, these books are incredibly, uh, just incredibly, you know, well done. And uh, this is another one that, again, I would highly recommend at some point. Um, the, the Gods and Magic one is a bit more specific to if you want to play a cleric or a champion, that's where you get the most value out of them. But um, I, I still love all these books, and this one here is great for any player um, to have in their, in their possession. All right, so the up next we have two books that these are the last two books in the player section of the video, and these are dedicated to some of the factions that operate within the world of Galarian at the time that I am recording this, which is the twenty sixth, I think. Uh, it might technically be the twenty seventh now of January because I'm recording this late at night. Uh, there is a new one coming out on the Firebrands, but we're not. It's not available or I haven't received it yet as, as of the time that I'm recording this. So I do have two of the books anyway, though. And the first one uh, is for the Pathfinder Society. Now, the Pathfinder Society is kind of cool because it's not only an organization in the actual like world of Galarian that operates um, as sort of like an adventurer's guild uh, kind of thing, but it's also the name that's given to the Pathfinder organized play system. So if you get if you go to like an organized play session for Pathfinder, it's usually called Pathfinder Society, and they come up with some really cool modules. But we're not here to talk about the modules. We're here to sort of talk about the book. And again, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything uh, in this video, but we will take a look at the uh, the table of contents here. So you do get a little bit of a history of the organization and what your day-to-day -day life might be like uh, with you uh, are part of the Pathfinder Society. And then you've got some different uh, factions within the, within the, uh, the organization. Because again, this is sort of a catch-all organization. So it is sort of your typical, like, adventurer's guild that you may have in other systems. Uh, any class can easily qualify for this. And what was actually kind of cool, if you were playing the Pathfinder 2nd Edition playtest uh, way back in the day, um, the different scenarios, a lot of them actually revolved. There was some adventures that were meant to be used for the same characters, like the characters that the players created uh, for the very first adventure. And they would sort of go through, I think they went through like half of the scenarios uh, with those characters. And a big part of it was that they had joined the Pathfinder Society and the Society was sort of sending them to these different locations. So we're going to get all kinds of cool uh, information on the factions, uh, the different society lodges. Uh, so the basically like the locations where you may convene for meetings with members of the society. And then you've got um, the gear um, that are sort of unique or created by the society for its members. Uh, Academy Instructors, and Secrets of the Pathfinder Society. So, again, we're not going to go through all of that here, but we will flip through the book just a little bit. Again, tons and tons of great uh, information in here. Just another really fantastic book. As you can see, there are some benefits for joining the organization in the form of exclusive feats. It's just, again, really, really cool stuff. Just a great book overall. Um, but I do put it sort of near the bottom of this list for players because it is something that is meant to be if you actually join the organization, which 
A lot of the adventure paths do give players the opportunity to join uh, the Pathfinder Society, but it may not be something that the group is overly looking to pursue. So it's a great book if your group is going to join the Pathfinder Society. Uh, if not, then this is one that you may want to hold off on until you get to the point where they're more interested in it, uh, or you may want to learn more about it yourself as a game master. But again, really fantastic book. And then we also have the Knights of Last Wall. So this was the most recent of the, uh, I think this is one of the more recent Pathfinder um, Lost Omens products to come out. Um, but yeah, this one is also, again, it's another organization, uh, the Knights of Last Wall. Uh, when I think it was when the Whispering Tyrant, uh, which was this like evil uh, lich lord, um, that when he escaped from his prison, uh, destroyed the city of Last Wall, and the organization known as the Knights of Last Wall is sort of the last remaining remnants of that once you know the the fallen city, and it's yeah it's it's a knight organization. So again, we'll take a look at the uh, the table of contents here. To see sort of what kind of information that you can get. Uh, you get their introduction history, the, again, the life as a Knight of the Last Wall, uh, the relationships that they may have in terms with like other areas or organizations or individuals. Uh, we got, again, the faction information that we have uh, with the other one. Uh, we have some new options here as well. So you've got backgrounds, uh, you've got different types of feats, as well as some of the, um, basically like some of the storylines or some of the uh, world events that are going on that the knights are actively uh, sort of involved in our areas where they may be um, working to do certain things. So you've got information on them, like if you were in Absalon, what they may be up to, the Shining Kingdoms, the Broken Lands, stuff like that. So you get some of their, basically like their motivations and uh, again, all kinds of really cool options. So if you wanted to join this particular order of knights, then that is an option. Uh, through this particular book and again that's they're they're really fantastic and just filled with all kinds of great uh great flavor and i have to admit this this is one of the more recent books and i haven't had a lot of opportunity to read through it yet um so that's why i'm not quite as familiar with the contents here but again uh if you wanted your characters or if the characters wanted to join the knights then this book is something that i would definitely recommend that you end up having uh in your in your possession uh, now, so those were the player ones. Now, the society books, like the, the organizational books, uh, are also ones that game masters would benefit from as well as players. So that's why I also wanted to include it sort of at the end of the list because it can work as a transition uh, to the books that I strongly recommend that only game masters really look into. Um, so we'll try to explain the reasoning for that here, but for the, the books that I'd shown up to this point, they're ones that, again, a lot of it would be information that the player should know, like their characters should have access to or would know about their own world. Um, the, and for as far as the organization books, if they join the organization, then it makes sense they would have access to all of those things. But the next few books are ones that, again, I think are best just for the Game Master, because they tend to revolve around uh, things like uh, campaign settings, like actual uh, large campaign setting books, or things that revolve specifically around, um, you know, uh, creatures like monsters, uh, legendary creatures, or some like well-known personalities uh, in the past and present of the world of Galarian. And they're things that as a game master you might benefit from having knowledge of, but your players may not necessarily know all the details, and having these books may spoil some of that stuff. Now the first one that I actually want to show here is the Lost Omens Grand Bazaar. Uh, so this is essentially just a large marketplace uh, in the city of Absalon. And this just gives you all kinds of locations within the bazaar itself, within the sort of this uh, market district that the players can uh, visit and the different things that they might offer. And again, just a really fantastic book with um, some plot threads that as a game master you may want to use for your players, um, some stories that they may be able to sort of go on or quests they may be able to sort of go on based on the, the rumors or based on the backgrounds of some of the shopkeepers. So again, something that I think would be best for just game masters, but you also get some like unique items that the, uh, the particular shops may carry, uh, specific like weapons or adventuring gear, clockwork, 
uh, you know, preachers, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. You know, things from like an apothecary. Um, there's like um, for like prosthetics. So if a character ends up losing a limb or if they end up becoming paralyzed, uh, they have like wheelchairs and artificial limbs that you'd be able to outfit them with. So just again, some really cool concepts in here. Just really interesting shops, really interesting NPCs, backgrounds for them and their motivations. Just again, an all around fantastic book, but one that I think is best suited for just the game master to have um, because like the players may hear of a unique weapon that is being sold or that the owner of a particular shop uh, has in their possession but they don't necessarily know what all of its properties are and you may not want to necessarily give out all the information out front either uh, you may not want the players to know the backgrounds of some of these shopkeepers um, in case they have their own ulterior motives but overall like i said a really fantastic book and uh, something that again just adds a fantastic level of detail to your campaign setting and you know even if you're not running uh your like the actual world of galarian and the city of absalon this is a fantastic book because it could just be like the market district of any large city in like your homebrew world just to have like the names of the shops the goods that they sell the backgrounds and motivations uh, of the shopkeepers again just really really cool stuff a fantastic book all right, and then up next we have The Lost Omens Legend. So this is a book about various NPCs um, that either existed in Galarian's past or present, and it gives you all kinds of really cool information about them, their background, their history, again, their motivations, some uh, abilities that may be associated with them, or that you may be able to give out to your players if they are associated with the particular uh, NPC. So again, just really, really cool stuff here. But once again, information that is something that the players probably shouldn't have access to everything that's in this book. It's the kind of thing that you may want to give out the information sparingly, or the players may have to uncover uh, the information as they go on. But yeah, this is again, just a really just an amazing, fantastic book. Uh, something that is definitely a worthy, worthwhile addition to your collection, but one that I would only recommend for Game Masters, because if you want to use these NPCs or these individuals, um, you know, you want there to be some mystery to it. And if the players have the book and they read the entry, it's just going to spoil all that. So that's a book that I consider to be a Game Master only uh, product, as is this one here which is the Lost Omens Monsters of Myth. So these are, we had legendary NPCs. Now we've got legendary creatures and monsters. So again, um, kind of the same concept as before. These have like the stat blocks for the individuals, as well as some information, some game mechanics that you might be able to put around them. Uh, such as, um, you know, equipment that may be associated with them or that could be made using parts of their bodies if you manage to defeat them. Uh, information on actually incorporating these creatures of legend for different levels or tiers of adventuring. So you got like low-level campaigns, mid-level or high-level. Uh, just, again, all kinds of really cool information. Some really interesting and awesome monsters included in here as well. Some folklore creatures. Again, just an absolutely incredible book, something that you don't, you're not going to use everything in here in your campaign, but man, you just need to use, you just need to use a couple of them to really make it work. Like you even have Krampus if you wanted to run a, a one shot holiday themed uh, uh, adventure. So again, just some really cool stuff in this book, a fantastic, fantastic book. But again, because it focuses on specific creatures and providing their stats and tactics and all kinds of information about them like that. It's something that is best suited just for game masters. All right, and we are coming down to our final three books. Uh, these ones aren't technically labeled as Lost Omens. However, they do share some of the characteristics of the Lost Omens books. So, for example, the Lost Omens books can be identified by the blue coloration on the spine, as well as the title of the book being done in sort of blue with a, uh, like a beige border going around them. So these ones aren't technically labeled as Lost Omens, but they do have the blue spine. They do have the blue lettering with sort of the beige outlining. And, I mean, yeah, these are, these are definitely, you know, part of 
uh, the Lost Omens uh, line. One of them is actually does say Lost Omens. Uh, the other has Lost Omens as part of the subtitle, and the third one just doesn't mention it at all, but I'm counting them as all part of this product line. So the first one is the Absalon book, and this is a beast. Uh, this is a, what is this? Oh, it's well over 300 pages. Uh, it does come with a map of the city as well, which is fantastic. Yeah, it's a near 400-page book on the city of Absalon. And I've mentioned this in the past, but, you know, that seems like it might be really restrictive with the amount of information that they give. But the truth of the matter is, is that they still leave a lot of stuff open for game masters to be able to put their own spin on or information that they're able to make their own. So they give you a lot of, again, different plot threads that you can use in your campaigns to create adventures uh, for specific NPCs. But it doesn't go into so much detail on everything that, again, it just doesn't leave you any room to customize things. It's, again, just an amazing book and an example of what a campaign setting book should be, which is filled with lots of great details and information for you to build your, your campaign around, while also giving you the tools that you need to create your own stories from the, you know, the threads that are presented in this book. And this one does it, again, incredibly well. All three of these books uh, do an amazing job with that. But yeah, just again, a really awesome, uh, fantastic book. And uh, Absalon is kind of like the uh, the default or one of the more primary uh, bases of operations for the Pathfinder setting. A lot of the adventure paths that have been released for Pathfinder over the years uh, usually revolve kind of around Absalon or the area. They've been expanding out, like the second edition ones have actually done a pretty good job of covering like a wide swath of the uh, the world of Galarian. But Absalon is just one of those incredibly iconic locations. It's such an iconic location that in the futuristic Starfinder setting, the world of Galarian has disappeared during the event known as the Gap, where basically all memories and knowledge and lore of that time period has been completely lost, even amongst the long-lived races that may have physically been there. Um, but when Galarian disappeared, in its place, in its orbit, was a space station known as Absalom Station. So Absalom is like, it's the, the, the lifeblood, I guess you could say, of the uh, the Galarian world. It's it's one of the most iconic locations uh, within the campaign world. And this is, again, just a fantastic book. You pair this with the uh, the Lost Omens, um, the Bazaar, uh, the Grand Bazaar, and you've got just, again, just a wealth of information. A really fantastic book. All right, up next, another campaign setting. All three of these books are going to be campaign settings, but the next one that we have here is the Mogwani Expanse. Uh, and again, I absolutely love this book. Um, they were, they do have a few campaigns, uh, adventure paths that they've released that do take place in this region, including things like the Blood Lords, which is the newest uh, adventure path at the time that this is wrapping up. There was also like the Strength of Thousands uh, adventure path also took place there. And yeah, this is just again a really awesome, uh, really awesome world. I did do a review video on this already. Uh, but yeah, it just has all kinds of great information in here. It presents some new, unique uh, takes on some of the uh, the ancestries, like the uh, the elves, uh, as well as the dwarves. My favorite has to be, uh, if I can find them here, uh, there's a group of dwarves that they they color their hair, like their beard, uh, and their, there we go. Uh, so they color their their hair based off of the night sky uh, as it appeared, or an approximation of how it appeared during some sort of significant event. And you can actually have those styles change. And again, it presents a really cool opportunity if the players do something special for these particular dwarves, um, then you could have them change their hair color when the players leave their, their region. You could have some of them change their hair to look like the night sky when the players returned from completing this quest or from when the, uh, the what the sky looked like when the players had just sort of reached there. And again, just some really cool uh, locations and information. Uh, my favorite area in here is, I think it's uh, Geb, I, I want to say, but it's kind of like an Egyptian themed uh, location uh, that also heavily uses uh, undead. Actually, um, that might not, Geb might be in another book. Um, but there's, yeah, there's one, I th maybe it's also, uh, a Cebu, 
But anyway, there's again just some really cool uh, locations uh, found in here, and yeah, you've got like the uh, the Egyptian culture that has their pharaoh is actually like an undead. Um, so there's some really just awesome stuff in this book. Uh, a really cool location, a really cool campaign setting. And again, you're getting a really richly detailed book with tons of incredible information for you to use to build up your campaigns while still giving you lots and lots of room to create your own adventures. So there we have the Mogwani Expanse. And finally, the last book in this series is another one that I unfortunately haven't had a huge chance to read uh, too, too much. I got this in, in the mail just before the holidays, and the last few weeks have been kind of hectic um, on top of that, So, which is also why I haven't been putting out uh, many videos. But we have The Impossible Lands, and I think Geb is actually in here. Uh, yeah, so we do have Geb in here. I think, actually, so Geb is where the Blood Lord's adventure path takes place, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, we just, again, another campaign setting book. It's a unique location within the uh, the Pathfinder world, the world of Galarian. Again, you got some, like, a lot of, like, undead uh, creatures in here, some abominations. Uh, I want to say that there's also potential for, like, androids, which sounds weird. Um, but it is something that, uh, actually, that might be something else. And finally, we have the last campaign setting, at least at the time that I'm recording this. This is the Pathfinder Impossible Lands. And so as you can see, this is the book that doesn't mention Lost Omens at all, but it does have, again, the blue coloration on the spine. It has the blue text with the, uh, with the beige uh, sort of surrounding it. So this is something I'm including in the Lost Omens book. I'm also going to admit that I haven't had much of an opportunity to read this one. I got this right before the holidays. And um, the holidays were, it was nice, but it was hectic. And the last few weeks have also been kind of like crazy. Um, we're doing like some house hunting and that's taken up a lot of our weekends and just a lot of our, you know, mental energy. So I haven't got a chance to really read this one too, too much, but we will take a little look here and see sort of what we have. Uh, this is the book that has Geb, which I think is where the Blood Lord's Adventure Path takes place. So I, I do apologize for saying that that takes place in the Mogwani Expanse. Um, it, it doesn't. Um, but there were adventures that were set in the, uh, the Expanse, the adventure paths. And so there were some adventures actually set in there uh, from the Pathfinder 2nd Edition playtest, which involved the Egyptian sort of area or inspired area. But yeah, so let's just take sort of a quick look through. We'll flip through a little bit just to see some of the, uh, the artwork that's in here. But again, you've just got another uh, campaign setting book uh, if you want to kind of, again, have a unique area to, um, to set your adventures in. Uh, then again, this one is absolutely fantastic for that. Um, so yeah, again, just really, really cool stuff here. So Geb, Geb is a location that I absolutely love. That's the one that I was kind of looking through uh, the most. I, not enough that I can recall a lot of the information. But when I did get the book, that was one of the first areas that I kind of flipped to. Uh, because, again, it does revolve really heavily around uh, utilizing undead. Like, undead are just members of society, which I think is absolutely awesome. Um, so, again, we got, like, the reanimators. Just some different uh, information you can see. Again, uh, just a really cool location. You got the, uh, the face paint to make you look like you're undead in those areas. Again, just an awesome, awesome location. And again, just a really cool book. Um, if you were running the Blood Lord's Adventure Path, like I said, this is the book that you might want uh, to go along with that. So if you want to run that Adventure Path, which is a fantastic Adventure Path, uh, if you wanted to run that particular path, then this is a book that I would highly recommend to go along with it. Uh, and again, it's just, you know, it's a 300 plus page campaign setting for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And the quality of the writing in all of these books is really second to none. 
Uh, it, they do, you know, Paizo does some incredible work with these settings, with these flavor books, with all of the Pathfinder 2nd Edition stuff. The Adventure Paths, Standalone Adventures, the Rules Expansion books, just overall, just a really incredible, uh, you know, body of work that Paizo has managed to put together. And these are all, like I said, every single one of these books is absolutely uh, would make a great addition to your collection. This is just sort of an idea of the order you may want to consider for them, uh, the reasons that you may want to consider picking them up, and hopefully, hopefully this helps at least a few people out there. Anyway, that's it for today. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Lost Omens product lines, if you've picked any of them up yourself, or if you haven't, which ones are you now considering to pick up first uh, based off of, you know, maybe this video or just based off of, you know, the, the books, titles that seem the most appealing to you. Uh, just let me know all that stuff in the comments below. Um, so thank you once again for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Uh, it really does mean the world to me. Uh, and yeah, it's, 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 it's more appreciated than you may know. Anyway, thank you all so very, very much. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all next time. Until then, take care.